I started dancing to pay for my van. No fucking way. Yeah. Fucking hell, that's <laughs> rad. So look, I bounced and DJed in strip yeah. clubs for like five years yeah. through college. So I've worked in that line a long time and spent a ton of time in a club. No, and it's funny too, cause like people are always like off put, cause like I've been celibate since like, like October and they're like, you don't belong here. Like, why are you? <laughs> You know, it's a place to make money. <laughs> right? It's a fucking great avenue to make money. Like if you have your wits about you. Yeah. And can't get crushed by that environment. Yeah, like the main thing is people that fall into drugs. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, typically people go into that place as a uh, last resort, not a choice. Well, most girls that go into that business, I feel like they've had like sexual trauma. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So how, how does it work? Are you... Are you only dancing in Texas or do you dance from the road? Or? I've only danced in Texas. I might dance from the road maybe, but I just haven't felt the need to. And I think it's way more dangerous to dance from the road. And Especially the, if people know then you're in the van. Like, yeah. Like it's easy to spot. And two, the economy in Houston is super good. So I make really good money when I'm there. So I can go home. I can work for a month and then I can leave for four months and be just fine. Yeah. So it's really fast money. And then I do a side job when I'm on the road, just social media marketing for my parents. Okay. What's, yeah. the, what's their business? They sell fountain pens. Fountain pens? Yeah. Fuck. I always, <laughs> so like every, every time I hear something like with a company, like with, with hate, like I'm trying to make a lot of things. And uh, like we bought these like towel ponchos for being on the boat while we're up here, just because they're nice. They're like a towel material and they're a poncho. You just put it on. Oh yeah, I saw your post. Yeah. And that's I'm like, badass. that's all these people make. They make one fucking thing and just change <laughs> designs on it and that works. Like, why can't I figure that out? Like I have to make 9 million different items. Right? You know, well, it's all about like invention. Like, I mean, you think about like anybody that's made a lot of, like who invented like the electric toothbrush? Somebody that was really lazy and didn't want to spend their own toothbrush. You got to figure out what are people wanting because they don't want oh, look, that's to be a, inconvenient. A great way to, to make money is have like do a business that is a job no one wants to do. Yeah. It's incredible that people, yeah. there's always that type of work. So let's, let's run this back a bit. Um, okay. So you're... Weightlifting in Texas, like pre, pre car accident, pre all that. Yeah. So you're weightlifting in Texas, you're training and just run me through this, the car wreck. Okay. So, I mean, I've broken a lot of bones. I'm super accident prone. I've had like six concussions. <laughs> oh, so, um, the car wreck, me and my coach had just gotten a fight and I was pretty upset. I was crying. I was leaving the gym. It was like the first turnout. It was raining and I guess I hydroplaned. I don't remember anything. So I got hit from the side and I got hit from the back and I was knocked completely out. I don't remember anything except sounds because the firemen had to like pry off my door and they were like, stop moving, don't move. So man, it like takes me back. Okay, so- For sure, dude. I yeah, so um, I wake up in the ambulance and I'm like, why am I here? And they're like, you've been in a wreck, just stop moving. And like, they shoot something in my arm, probably like fentanyl or whatever. Probably, something too. Yeah. And I'm like, no, just take me home. And they're like, oh no, we can't do that, sweetie. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, and, and, and I can't even talk cause I've punctured my lung. So I can't breathe. So then I'm like, you know what? Let me just try to move my legs. And I couldn't move my legs. And so I was freaking out. I'm like, oh God, am I paralyzed? You know, what's going on? So I'm in ICU and I'm there for like two weeks, um, but they found out that I broke my pelvis, all of my left ribs, my collarbone and punctured my lung. So everything on the driver's side just fucking Yeah, smashed. so pretty much, yeah. So I was pretty much a vegetable. Like I couldn't, you know, like I couldn't move my, my upper body. I couldn't move my lower body. Like it was a shit show. And the worst part of the, this whole thing, so I've totaled my car 
I Here, can't pull, pull this. Uh, it'll, oh. it'll move wherever you want it to. So, so. I, I totaled my car. I can't breathe. Um, my life's in shambles and the cop walks in and writes me a ticket for causing an accident. Come I, was, on. <laughs> I was like, this is why people hate cops. <laughs> well, there's a lot of reasons, but that's not a great one. Yeah, Fuck, man. Yeah. So I, mean, I can't imagine like, I, I went through a pretty rough patch of injuries and a bunch of surgeries and stuff like that, but I'm aware I did that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I caused that fuck up. Yeah. Yours isn't that way. Yeah. Like you just woke up to now life's different. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was freaking out, but at the same time, like everything happens for a reason. And I don't know if you ever saw that documentary, like Don Wall. Mm hmm. And like Tommy gets stuck and he like realizes that like he has so much more power than that, that than he, than he thought that he had, because like, you don't like, you don't realize your like limits until you push your ceiling. So I just realized my limits, um, or lack of limits after that accident, because, you know, like. I mean, I was limping when I finally got out of the wheelchair, like I could barely walk and people were like, oh, like there was these meme pages and like, they were like, oh, she's never going to lift again. And I'm like, just watch me, you know, like, yeah. so it really gave me the, the drive to just push myself like nothing, nothing in life. Like, I guess like you don't realize how small, you know, things are like, not like things aren't that big of a deal, you know, until, you know, like when you almost die, you're like, nothing matters. You no know, perspective shift. Yeah. Right? Like it's a huge perspective shift. Um, yeah, I, I haven't had any near death, but like the, the chronic pain for a few years fucked me up good. Yeah. And, uh, lost my dad in 14 and like that changed a bunch, at least on my concept of how I was interested to spend my time. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you're healing up from that. And I mean, like, it's just a ton of alone time. Um, yeah. So for like six months, I just stayed in bed, um, slept pretty much the whole time and didn't, didn't like, I didn't get on social media. It was kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Like just cause it took me six months to get out of the wheelchair. Yeah. Cause I remember, like, I think I was following you prior. Yeah. And was there a bigger following prior and then you, yeah, de you deleted it. Uh, I didn't delete it. I just like lost followers. I never got posted. It. Got it. Got it. It makes I sense. Yeah. I, you know, like I never posted and then Instagram's algorithm changed. Yes. So yes, it's a constantly moving target. Yeah. So, okay. And so now, and now I just don't give a shit. You don't care. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. You know, I mean, I'm always amazed by like, if, if Instagram isn't, a main part of your income. Yeah. The people that still let it stress them out. Like, I'm like, what are you doing? You don't yeah. have to be here. Why would you involve yeah. yourself with this thing? And nor like, I mean, it's great for people that make it a main income, but for me, I almost don't like people are like, like, why don't you YouTube your journeys and all this stuff? But I don't want to have to do it. Like if I post, I want to do it because I want to do it. But like, I'm out of service so much that I'd be like, Oh, well I got to go back to service. Like, I no, I, I don't I, really want to do that. And I just don't want to learn all the tech. <laughs> was that different prior to the accident of like how you felt about the social media stuff? Um, well, I definitely think I've grown up a lot. I think that my, um, I think that everybody gets wrapped up into social media as like a confidence factor. And I think that I, I definitely relied on it more back then than I, I do now for sure. Um, but yeah, like I feel like, I mean, I was in a four year relationship at the time and so prior to the wreck, um, no. So it was two years into the wreck and then two years after the wreck. Got it. And then I finally left, but how was that with a partner? Like, I, oh man, do you want me to be fully honest? It's up to you, man. I, it I, was <laughs> all right. Let's go into it. Um, it was, it was weird. It was really hard because so at the accident, um, it's like life changing. So you're almost like over emotional, like, oh, I don't want to lose this person. I almost lost my life. I want to live with them. I want to be with them. I want to whatever. So our relationship got stronger 
after the accident, but it was like kind of weird because like I had a broken pelvis. I was in a wheelchair. Like, what can I do? You know? Right. And I didn't want him to cheat on me. And this is, this is how I know that my confidence was in the gutter at the time. Like I didn't want him to cheat on me. So I basically gave him permission to sleep with somebody else while I couldn't. Yeah. And, um, that's heavy. That's a, so that's a then, heavy, that's a heavy decision. Yeah. But get this. So two years later, um, my best friend was like, Hey, this, this girl is saying that, um, the guy that you're with, like that she doesn't know how to tell him that she's leaving and that she's going to go see another guy in another state. And I was like, why would, why would, like, why would she ever care what he thinks? Right. And well, that was the girl that I gave permission to. They had been seeing each other for two years after that. Yeah. He's in a relationship. Yeah. And I had no idea. And when I confronted him about it and he lied to me, I was like, yeah, I was like, all right, well, that's it. Like he, like like, I've already made the step of saying, I'm okay with the idea that you're sleeping with someone else. Like we have an honesty bit here and now you're a fucking lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is that like, you're like, honestly, all like, like the moment that he lied to me about it, I was like, all right, that's it. Like he, I mean, he was an asshole. I mean, he cheated on me. He did, you know, he beat the shit out of me. Like, all, and all of that was fine. But the moment that somebody lies to me, I'm like, all right, peace out. Uh, there's, there's some other lines we could probably draw <laughs> some standards there, right? Now, like, well, yeah. now, now I'm like one, like now I'm like way worse. Cause like now it's like one, like one little red flag and I'm out. Fuck yeah. Yeah. But what, like, why, why shouldn't you be though? Yeah. But like back then and like, especially like being in the wheelchair, I think that like, especially fucked up my confidence, you know, well, can I, I say, can I, yeah, can I say, say whatever you fucking want. Um, <laughs> no, that that's for sure. Right. Like as an athlete, like I, for me getting hurt, like I went from, I, in 2016, like I had finished second in the world, finishing up a season in the Highland games. And then I couldn't walk 200 yards Yeah. after surgeries. And yeah. so I just never realized how much relying on this thing is what gave me the confidence that I can perform when it counts, that I can train hard, that I can push myself, that like all those lessons, I hadn't figured out how to translate into the rest of my life yet. Well, and I'm sure that you played sports either at the high school or collegiate level, right? And I feel like everybody gets in this like weird transition. Like when you stop playing sports and you've done it as a kid for forever, it's like, what do I do with my body? And like, if you're not physically active, you kind of drive yourself nuts. Yeah, for sure. And then it's one thing to like, oh, I don't play sports anymore because I'm out of high school or college. Yeah. Um, but there's so many options now, right? Whether it's weightlifting or CrossFit or strongman or anything, intramural soccer, who gives yeah. a shit, but not physically being able to, to do after, anything. Yeah. Yo, this thing's done anything I've ever asked of it to do. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. And so I, I don't know a lot of people who had to live through that transition. Yeah. And it's it, definitely shitty for sure. Yeah, man. It, it, it's super fucking heavy. Um, so going through that relationship ends, when, when do things start looking toward the van? Oh, okay. So that whole accident had nothing to do with my life because, okay. So I already had like PTSD. Like I was diagnosed with PTSD when I was 18. Um, I had social anxiety. Um, after the car accident, I could barely drive my car. Oh, like, so what was, the, what was the original PTSD from? Um, just sexual trauma. And then, sorry, man. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I'm I'm pretty much an open book, so I don't really mind. I, and uh, I'm not I'm not sorry for asking. I'm I'm oh. sorry that you had to deal with shitty oh. people. That's okay too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I feel like everything is handed to you for a reason. So I. I think that the worst mentality a person can have is a victim mentality. I agree with that a hundred percent. Yeah. So I, I never see myself as the victim in any of my situations. And I think that's what gives me the mindset that I have now. But so my whole van living. Yeah. So I, I mean, I had, I had severe anxiety. Like I couldn't even drive my car without crying. That's why I got my bulldog. He was an ESA dog. Um, and Um, I had gotten into like another kind of short-term relationship and we had broken up 
for infidelity reasons and just lying and, and, and like another lying situation. So I was like, all right. Um, well, so I called my friend and she was going to the beach that weekend and I got shit faced on the beach and rolled out of a ATV golf cart thing. Um, hit my head, oh, no. had a concussion. I was life flighted. Whoa. Yeah. I woke up in the hospital. So this is how long after this is like literally a year ago. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I woke up in the hospital and I had no idea why I was there. I don't remember this $45,000 helicopter ride, <laughs> you know, like oh, for no. 11 miles. Like, I don't remember anything. I wake up. This is like the start of COVID. So I have no visitors. I have no phone. They won't tell me what's wrong with me. I'm like getting pissed off because now I figure out I have a TBI. But um, so... Literally, I'm like, if like if like if I don't get like a doctor in my room in like two hours, I'm checking myself out. Yeah, I'm out of here. So I didn't get a doctor, so I have this neck brace on. I rip off the neck brace. I still have the IVs in my arm. I rip out the IVs, but I still have the IVs, and I didn't want to rip out the IVs, so I had something to clean them with. Yep. So I, I walked out of the hospital. My friend picked me up. Just walked out. Yeah, just literally walked out. What the uh, shit, man? All right. <laughs> went back to the beach and started drinking. Well even worse part of the story at the same time my my so my friend she picks me up from the hospital but her mom was driving the golf cart she got arrested for a DUI <laughs> so she's picking her up from the jail too oh my god <laughs> We got we got to get you some better friends. These aren't these aren't the people to spend your time with. No, man. she's awesome. Type two fun. All right. So, so I go back to the beach and I'm drinking and like I mean I feel funny, but I've had a concussion, so I'm like, oh, I'm just concussed. I probably shouldn't be I'm drinking. I'm just concussed. Yeah. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be drinking, but I'm like, whatever. Um, but then I get back home a few days later. I'm like, something's actually really wrong. Yeah. So I get my medical records transferred. I had a hematoma on my spine, which I did not know about. And I'm so happy that I didn't work out until I figured that out. Because if I would have done like drop snatches and dropped that on my spine, I would have completely messed myself up. Whoa. So yeah, I had that. And then I had a TBI. And I was like, this is like super weird because I keep waking up and I have no anxiety. And this has never happened. Like I've never had a day in my life where I didn't wake up and not have anxiety, you know? So I was like, maybe I'm just concussed and the anxiety will come back when I'm not concussed. So I waited a week, no anxiety. I waited two weeks, no anxiety. And I was like, this is the first time in my life that I'm able to travel. I'm able to drive my car. I'm not afraid to do absolutely anything. Like I have no anxiety. This is the weirdest thing. So I packed up my car, just like a Nissan Rogue. And I just started driving. I had no idea where I was going. So I asked Instagram, I was like, where should I go? And they said, uh, Utah. So that was my first, well, I went to Colorado to so Utah. So this is a year ago? Yeah. In your first living in what what size vehicle is a your Nissan first? A Nissan Rogue, like a like it's an not SUV. Not a giant vehicle, yeah. Yeah, it's just a, like an SUV. I can't sit up in it. So like back seats fold down, air yeah. mattress. Not even air mattress, just sit down bag. blanket. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, and so I, I mean, I didn't even know where to go. I just had Instagram, and wherever they told me to go, that's where I went. And you know, man, I lost my train of thought. So you're oh, yeah. yeah heading oh, to yeah. Utah. Yeah. So. And then, because I had no anxiety, I was like, let me start testing my anxiety. So anything that anybody would ask me to do, I'd be like, all right, like you want to go cliff jumping? Let's do it. Like just trying to see like when I would get When scared. does it show up? Yeah. And so I cliff jumped, no anxiety. I rock climbed, no anxiety. Like not like, even the little bit of nervousness butterflies before doing a thing of like, you know, like the nervousness of like getting on a roller coaster, but not, it's not the overwhelming so there's like, anxiety. Yeah. It's just like a little bit of nervousness and, and then it's like, fuck it, okay. send it. <laughs> but there is still something that's like, something the heart that, rate does get up a little bit a little to be bit, like, we're yeah, jumping yeah. off a thing. For sure. But that's like the whole point. Cause like now I'm like, like, it's almost like I'm not living unless I feel that heart rate. It's like almost like I'm getting addicted to the adrenaline. Hmm. Yeah. See, I, I, I'm real similar other than the adrenaline part. Like for me, that's not the one that gets me. Yeah. Like I like life experience. Like I want as many unique 
life experience as yeah. possible. If internal is involved, sick, but that's not the big <laughs> one I'm chasing. Yeah. I think I just want both. Fucking but, hell. Well, yeah. like that feeling, I yo, want to you're almost, alive. Yeah. I want to, like, it's almost like I'm chasing to almost die with never really dying, which is weird because I've had so many yeah. life or death well, but there's a reason you're not scared of it. Yeah, I guess that's true. That's probably, I don't, that's kind of weird, but yeah. Yeah, I, like, I, I know that I've got a couple things where, like, I can be uncomfortable for a really long time. Like, that, I have that now. Like, I can deal with sitting, like, being slightly injured or any of that. Like, I can deal with a lot yeah. of bullshit for a really, really long time. Um, there's definitely some unlocks that have come through that level of trauma the man that's really fascinating though about the tbi thing because you're familiar with a comedian sam kennison Mm -mm. so years and years ago this guy like late 70s early 80s crazy famous ended up on snl a lunatic um started off as like an evangelical preacher and like grew up in that family um and at some point I got hit by a car or something like that and had this major brain injury and everything changed. Yeah. He became this fucking wild man that just didn't have any limits. Well, they did this study on men um, that had TBIs and it's like weird because like a lot of men that get TBIs, they end up leaving their families and like starting all new lives because they, they have something in their brain that loses attachment which is weird because I also feel like I've lost my sense of attachment to many things. Okay. Like I love them in the time that they're with me, but I'm okay to let them all go. But before my so accident, basically everything family, just, yeah. just when they're not around, it's I'm okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'll call you, I'll see you when I see you. But like before that I was so codependent on like my relationships, my family, like, well, which I, is why you're ending up with guys that are, that are shitty. Yeah. Well, now I'm not ending up with any guys. Of course, of course. Right. It's gone like complete opposite. You know, even like my last relationship was in Montana and I mean, I thought I was in love with him. I thought I would be with him for the rest of my life. And he lied to me one time and I was like, all right, well, I just packed up my stuff. I wrote him a letter and I, and, I and I just left. Like it was a completely different scenario. There was no begging him to change. There was no like, Nah. Either either you're going to figure it out or you're not, you know? That's not my business. Yeah, that's... Fuck, man. That, that's, that's very, very interesting from the brain injury that essentially that rewired... Yeah. A, a, a major part that, I mean, seems like a great thing that happened. Well, I feel super blessed and grateful every day. Like, I literally wake up every day and... I also from the TBI, I think I became way more religious or okay. no spiritual. Okay. I wouldn't say religious, but that, spiritual. That's one of the questions I have, you know, just reading your, your profile. With, yeah. Uh, like, I mean, I believe in a God and I believe that he has protected me for whatever reason. And I just wake up every day and I tell him why I'm grateful and thankful. And ever since then, I have literally gotten everything I've wanted in my life. Interesting. right? It's weird how that changes, you yeah, know, mine, like. Uh, prior to my knee, um, and like through the course of dealing with all that pain, like I started, uh, experimenting psychedelics and mushrooms and yeah, I was just looking for anything to get out of chronic pain. Yeah. And those turned a big corner for me. And I, I would say prior to venturing further into that, I was really confidently atheist. And now I'm not atheist. I I don't know that I believe in big capital letter G God, at least from the book. I don't think anyone's quite got it right yet, but the universe may be something as a whole that's bigger that I'm just part of. Yeah. And I'm I'm good with that. I definitely believe that there's energy and God might just be energy. Same. You know? Yep. And so that my question I have is like, he's not like a person, but describe your God is, is what my question was. Literally, I would just say energy because I, I feel like any like anything that you put your time, effort, whatever you manifest can literally just come to you. So I believe it's all energy. I believe it's all intertwined. I, 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 I'm a hundred percent. I'm a hundred percent back you on that. That, like even to a point now, like I'm careful 
with what I put out into the universe because it's sure. coming. Yep, for sure. And like something like, I fucking hold off on that stating that project too loudly. Yeah. But like yeah. sometimes like the amount of times that I knock on wood during the day, because I'll like I'll like I'll think something, I'm like, don't <laughs> don't even put that out there. Yeah. yeah. So when did you start building a van? When did you go from car to like I, when did it click, I guess, that this lifestyle I like that I needed a van. Yeah. Honestly, I would still be in my car if it wasn't for my dog because so we went to Vegas and this was December. We were in Vegas and I brought my dog with me cause it was cool enough. And we were just living in my Nissan rogue, but I couldn't put his food bowl or water bowl down in the car. And it would get super cold at night. It was just hard to make food. Like it was very inconvenient. He was miserable. He didn't have enough room. And I was like, I, I really need to get something bigger for my dog and something that I can have an air conditioner that I can leave him if, you know, I want to do a short yeah. hike. So that's why I got the, the, the van was really for him because he's super high maintenance. Sure, sure. <laughs> Look, I, I don't know that... High maintenance is <laughs> what you're describing like, this dog like, as. It's pretty minimal. What he's hoping for is like it'd be cool if I had food and water that was in or a, a flat area. Yeah, and like a like a, like a real bed. What's you your know? dog's name? Uh, Sheldon. Is he in the van? No. Where is he? No. He, so my parents are watching him right now just because it's like. And I honestly thought about bringing him because usually Montana at this time is colder. Yeah. It is so hot. Yeah, I'm, it's. Same. We're, we've been up here for 4th of July, like the last four years. I'm shocked. Yeah. So I'm so happy I didn't bring him because he would be miserable right now. You know, so. So he's down in Houston. With yeah. Your so after once, once it starts getting cooler, I'll take him out. Cause like, right I mean, I'm actually surprised he's very athletic for a bulldog. Like he'll make it to the climbs. Like he'll, he'll make it to the bottom of the rock. Yeah. They're not exactly built for yeah. Long distance. But his, uh, his separation anxiety does him well. He's like, I'll figure it out. I'll yeah, figure yeah, it right. out. I'm a pack animal. This is my person. I will, I keep up. <laughs> we're we're you know, here, here hanging out with Dana and them and, uh, Dana's dog, Kaya is, uh, their pit and like, whatever that bond is those two have yeah. is wild and it, it's really cool to see so it'll be, it'll be fun to introduce you to everyone yeah um, so you're 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 dancing to start building paying for the van yeah so Dan when travels. did you when did you start dancing was this something you'd already are done for a while or? no i had never done it i mean i had been a bartender when i was younger um, my parents obviously did not approve of me <laughs> in that business, but I mean, I'm an adult, like how, how old are you? I'm 30. Okay. So I make my own decisions. Like I'm paying my own bills. Like they're not going to front my van life. They're not, they weren't super supportive of it, of it at first. They're kind of like, okay. Like they thought I was out of my mind, which of course they are. maybe I'm a little bit out of my mind. The, the previous generation doesn't get it. Yeah. They, they don't understand the. I'm willing to trade the financial security for freedom. Yeah. I, I want freedom to spend and do whatever I fucking want every day. But I think that it's also kind of funny because if I don't have the financial security, I'm literally living, I'm almost homeless. Close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. There's, there's a... Like, it's how much do I really need to live my life? Has that helped? Like just knowing that like, oh, I don't need any of that bullshit. Oh yeah. Because people, people think that they need all these things. And then when you don't have them, you learn to just live without them. Like, I mean, how much do you really need to be like, I, like, I feel like I'm happier now and I have less things than I've ever had. You have less restrictions too. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I bought my own house when I was, or my own condo when I was 28 and that's why I came back from Utah my first time. And I was like, I got to rent this out because I don't yeah. think I'm, cause I don't think I'm coming back, you know? Fuck yeah. And so I just rented it out and now they're paying my mortgage. Great. What, what were you doing work-wise before? Uh, just social media marketing Okay. for my parents uh, full-time. For the fountain pen. Company. Yeah. For the, right. for the family business. Um, now I just do it part-time, but they don't, but they don't, they don't support my lifestyle to the, ex like to this extent. So I need more money. Sure. So I started off just bartending at a strip club because I was like, this is COVID time. You know, like 
strip clubs are always going to have men in them. Mm-hmm. So we're a remarkably simple species, All right? Yeah, we're we are not terribly complicated dudes. But then you know, I just kind of like there was so much drama in the workplace. I kind of got tired of working with other girls. I was like, yep. I'll just work by myself. I'll make a shit ton more money doing it. And so I literally only started dancing like a month before I left on this trip. Wow. Yeah. Hell yeah. So like, what 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 did you build out? What is your van? Uh, like the type? Yeah. Uh, n- uh, Nissan NV 2500 high roof. Uh-huh. So it's basically the Nissan truck with a high roof camper on it. Um, the only thing I wish is that it was a diesel. It's mm. gas. But I mean, it's gotten, I mean, it's mobbed on some dirt roads. So like, I can't complain. Hell yeah. 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 So what, like, what are you totally into that? So, and the reason I'm asking, cause I know whenever I'm done with that truck, which will be in the next year or so, I'm building a van. Yeah. Um, I'm going to end up spending a lot on it. I know that. So totally. What am I into yeah, it? Cause it'll be very different than what mine ends up being <laughs> right now. So it, so I bought the van with the flooring and the solar panel from another climber. Oh, nice. For fourteen five. 14,500. So and that, someone was already living in it. Yeah. Cool. Kind of part-time. And so I got that for, so it had a hundred thousand miles on it and that's not that bad. Cause I'm hoping to get 300 out of it. Um, but then I built my bed for like 50 bucks. That's literally, I think all that I put into it. So you're the second person, uh, that we've run into. I didn't podcast with the other guy, Neil. But we ran into on the trip. He came out and camped with us one night in Wyoming near uh, Devil's Tower. And okay. like he's doing the whole thing too. And he has like a squat rack he's built off the back of the van and like has his dirt bike in the van next to the bed. And yeah, you know, it's, I think it's easy for people to see that van life and also think like as cool as the tiny house thing started, right? This idea of like, yeah, I don't need 3,500 square feet of bullshit and then being trapped behind that mortgage, I can live this way and have the freedom. Yeah. But now it's turned into $300,000 tiny homes. Yeah. Whereas the vans have done the same thing. Like what started as this dirtbag lifestyle for climbers and surfers and adventurers it's is now really quickly the now into $200,000 vehicles. Yeah. So the only, so, I mean, I'm super content and happy with my van. So I probably won't put that much. The only, so there's this company in Houston, they're called Vast Overland. And they gave me a quote to put an air conditioner in. They're going to cut out a hole mm-hmm. in the roof. And I'd rather somebody professional do it than me. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, to I do know it, what I'm good at. Yeah. So to do that, hook it up to enough battery power that I'm not scared to, you know, because the, the one thing is having a dog and relying on battery power, you got to know that that's not going to shut off. Right. You know? So for me, um, I'll definitely get an air conditioner in it, which will be 6,000. And then I'm just going to get an aluminum bed frame just to make it lighter. Yeah. And for more storage on the bottom. Um, yeah, and less room than two by fours. You can build it out of one by ones or whatever it is, like the square tubing that aluminum yeah. comes in. Yeah. So I'll probably put in about 7,000 to it just in that. But I mean, I don't need nice walls, you know, like I have a solar shower bag on the top of my car. I don't need to shower in Showering my car. Outside is the goddamn best. No, I mean, it is. The only problem is in winter, it gets a little Yes, cold. I also don't live out of mine. So, yeah. like, the, so the times I have are very yeah. romantic. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I'll definitely shower in a lake, shower in a river for five, seven days, and then go take a hot shower and, like, actually wash my hair and not look so bummish. Where do you do that? Anywhere. Anywhere. So yeah. big gas stations, RV parks. Oh, oh, you mean like, oh, hot showers? Yeah, where so would you? So mostly gyms, but yeah, RV parks. I've snuck into some KOAs. Yeah. Like. <laughs> so we, we found out during our like eight week road trip that we did that, uh, like we, the first one, it was just Bonnie and I did it together and before Brant was with us and I had a membership to Gold's. Yeah. And I was like. Oh, you can they've go got gyms and walker rooms. This is a great place to shower. That and um, like a lot of laundry mats have showers in this area, which is interesting. And then like down in Zion, like there's just places to shower. Like people know that there's dirt baggers. Yeah, yeah. So they definitely cater to that community being in the West. Man, 
That's really, yeah. I, I love learning all like the little tidbits that only come from like, I live this way. Yeah. Like you just have to figure it out. Yeah. That and then worst case scenario, you can get a solar shower bag at Walmart for 10 bucks, put on top of the car and it'll drizzle you. Yeah, we, we occasionally like, if we need to do laundry and, and really need more of a work day, yeah. like every five or six days, we'll get an Airbnb somewhere just to yeah. rewash clothes, have a bed, recalibrate. Yeah. Maybe prep some meals, fucking hit the road. Yeah. How do you handle food? I mean, do you have a fridge you've got or an ice chest? I have two Yetis. Um, they keep ice pretty okay. Um, but yeah, I just pretty much, I either cook on my propane stove or over the uh, campfire, or I like to get, I mean, I don't really like processed meats a lot. So mm -hmm. I'll just get like raw fish that I can like eat raw. And then I put that in like wraps or like salads and so salmon or tuna yeah, or anything like pretty that. Pretty right? much, yeah. That or um sometimes like you can get the pre made chicken from like uh Safeway or, sure. or whatnot here and then I just bag that and make tacos out of it. It's perfect. Yeah. So how how many days will you kinda fuck off off grid before punching like yeah, I guess think how many days in a row will you just bail and stay in one spot? Depends. Am I with people or am I not with people? Because oh, if okay. I'm so if I'm with people, I'll stay out there all day, every day, forever. For a week. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, when I'm by myself, it kind of gets lonely. And like there's definitely like a safety factor being a female traveling by myself. Like you have to trust your gut instincts. For like for sure. I've stopped some places and I've gotten like some weird feelings and I've been like, you know what? I just need to move on. And like I've been tired as hell and then like I have to go another hundred miles to get to the nearest place. And so, I mean, I've got in my car and I've gone because you have to trust your gut instincts in that scenario. So I don't really like to go off grid by myself, like to super, super remote places just because anything can happen, you know? Oh, for sure. Right. But I love to, I mean, so one of my, this is people, people freak out when they hear this. So one of my, um, things that I do to find people wherever I'm at is I get on Tinder and I look for other adventurous. And I'm like, let's go camping. Let's go climb. Like, that's how I find a lot of my climbing partners is through Tinder. No shit. Yeah. Tinder's the secret climbing hookup. Yeah, it is. That's fucking rad. But then you get some like weird, like I've had some weird Tinder stories. I, I'm fucking sure, dude. I would I'd be like, we're going to go hang out in the woods. I've, yeah. Cool. So you, you always have that. Like, so my biggest excuse is, oh shit, I forgot. I got to go do laundry. So, so because you're using <laughs> Tinder to like, find friends on the road are you open for both men and women like because yeah. you're looking for friends yeah fucking fascinating yeah what an interest i wouldn't have thought tinder was would be the way to go about i that. definitely like, meet up man. with men more than i do women just because they're definitely more. They're, there's more ballsy men and they're more with like i definitely use that sex factor like guys will almost do like you know like if there's that that chance that we could hook up. Yeah. They're definitely going to take me multi-pitching or yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 Jeez. <laughs> no, you're not wrong. We're, like I said, we're not terribly complex. Uh, no, that's fucking great. So, like, with, with deciding that you're dancing to, to make cash, so, like, when you go back home and pick up the dog, will you dance for a couple weeks and then Probably. fuck off again? Yeah, why Have not? You thought about doing the OnlyFans thing and then manage it from the road? I thought about doing an only vans. Only vans. There's <laughs> hot um, van content. I mean, I thought about it, but I don't, I don't know. Like there's one, like for me, it's kind of just, I know that my family would hate that. Like dancing, they don't have to see it. The only fans that they get, like they have a great customer base and like, it would be kind of weird for their customers to like That's subscribe if, to my only vans. Well, I mean, so like how would, I guess the way I think about it, right. Is how do they find it if you're not advertising it on Instagram? But I guess then at some point you have to advertise it. Yeah. Because why not yeah, where the fuck else reach is it gonna your happen? full yeah. marketing grow? Yeah. I guess I didn't know if you could go a different route with like advertising via Reddit or something like that. You know, Maybe. Into a different community that way. 
separation of church and state. A I mean, bit, I right? probably could. I mean, all of the dancers that I work with, they have their only fans. Fuck, of course they do. And they make good money doing it. Well, you then aren't in that environment. Yeah. And as someone who's around that and like, I wasn't at a great club. And yeah. then we had girls that were prostituting and stuff like that as well. Um, of, of all sex work, the stripping one to me is, is the toughest. It is. Well, it okay. depends on the club. I didn't work at a very nice so, one. So, well, the, this is the thing is that Houston is a Mecca for strip clubs yep. because they do let you touch the girls. Uh -huh. There is less boundaries. So it is a little bit harder for me. Cause like, I don't do VIPs. Okay. Like I, like I, like I don't do the extras. So they can get a lot more from other girls. So and, and just so we're clear for everyone listening, extras and working in this environment is anything, anything, anything yeah. like if you pay, on the table. yeah. If, I mean, if you're willing to pay for it mm -hmm. and if you're willing to pay the price, why not? But for me, my thing is I have so much peace of mind that I'm all about my choices. Like I'm never going to make a choice that I'm going to wake up and hate myself the next day. For sure. So like I want the money, but I don't need the money. So I'm in a little bit of a different situation. See, than that's most where I would dancers. think the OnlyFans thing would keep you the freedom that you're on the road. Yeah. You can do it from anywhere. Like book an Airbnb for whatever, a couple of days and do whatever yeah. you want, you know? Yeah. Um, I definitely thought about it. It's just overcoming. Like I know my family is going to feel away. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. At some point, like they're used to, you've moved into a van and you've, dance to pay for the van like yeah and and you're not a piece of shit you're not fucking up with drugs you're not doing any of these things and so it, at yeah. some point where's the damage being caused well and that's the thing is like when my, i mean when my parents figured out i was dancing or i kind of just told them my mom was counting my ones and <laughs> <laughs> what are you what are you doing with all this are you playing bingo somewhere <laughs> yeah so um, when they found out about it, you know, like they were kind of like discerned and I was like, you know what? I'm, you know, like, am I not happy? Like, am I not the happiest person I've ever been? And I'm doing everything to get the things that I want. I'm not asking y'all for anything like, right. Yeah. I, I and, need you to trust that I'm okay. Yeah. And they kind of, kind of respected that. That's fucking, that's, yeah. that's rare. Yeah. You know, it's rare, but then you know, I try to be empathetic now that I'm fucking almost 40. And I think about like my kids, you know, if I was going to have kids and they're growing up in any of this, like where are the big important things in my life? And like, yeah, I don't fucking care about that headache. I worked in a strip club for a long time. And like, at least I could give some advice of like, be safe. Here's some, here's some things that I learned in this time. Like yeah. don't confuse. This is a place to fucking work. Yeah. And the people that mess that up don't get the separation in those two. Yeah. Now. It is a very interesting environment to work in because, man, the ones I worked in, you know, fucking Wild West. I mean, there weren't any rules. Like, I also will do things working in that environment that are not acceptable for me in the rest of my life. Like, I fucking sold drugs and, yeah, I mean, beat the shit out of a dude in the parking lot and took drugs that he was selling in the club and then we sold them. Like I've done some sketchy shit in those environments. Well, the thing is, is that like nobody can shame anybody in that environment because you're, you're like, y'all are all kind of in the gutter. And that's, and that's how I always <laughs> felt about it, right? Like, so I took a job after that working, doing this really weird like third party home telephone thing at AT&T stores. And like I had to approach strangers and like get their social security number and figure out their home telephone plan to try to get them to upgrade to something with direct TV or bundle or whatever it was. Meanwhile, home telephones are dying. Yeah. And I remember like, I was like, yo, we're just fucking ripping people off. Like I knew it. So like I remember, you would get that old sucker that. Yeah. yeah like yeah. I felt, I felt way grosser about that than I ever did any of the really sketchy stuff at the club because I felt at the club, like everyone who's walked into this environment knows the game. Yeah, exactly. These are the rules here. Like, it's always so funny to me when, um, like guys, like when I'm dancing and like, they, they are like, Oh, like you're so into me. And I'm like, like, <laughs> like literally this is for the money. Yeah, of course <laughs> like, it is. Like, this is like, 
the most purest marketable transaction that this can be. You want my body. I want your money. Yeah. Like, Let's make no- a swap here. <laughs> There are no feelings in this. No, it's fucking incredible that guy that again, look, that's why the other side of strip. It's not like there's a place that dudes get to go do this for, for groups of women and really do well. It's strip clubs that guys dance at are still for guys. Yeah. Right. Like that's the customer for strip clubs is male. Whether who, no matter who's dancing. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, small percentage. Yeah. I mean, I'm one of those girls that I love partying at a strip club, Yeah, but not that many girls are like that. There's a lot of girls that are like, Oh, you're going to the strip club. But I think it's different after you work in one. That is true. It's totally different after you work in one because you've seen the man behind the curtain. Like, you know, the game. Yeah. And so getting to watch the game from a spectator seat, like in that place and see people work is always more fascinating. So and, I, I'm the same way. I don't want to go to a regular bar. I'd rather way go to a strip club. And now I just love strippers. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. There's just no shame there. So I just love a good stripper. <laughs> Dude, I fucking dig it. I, I, I think it's fucking way rad. Um, so, so now you're, you're still traveling, still lifting. Um, I lift sometimes. Like, I mean, I have my bar in my car that I have not pulled out yet. Um, I went to the gym yesterday and I did some squats just to kind of like keep movement. Cause when I don't do it ever, and then I get back home, I'm like, Oh, this really sucks getting back into it. So how how beat up are you still from all the, the car wreck? I can say that rock climbing has really helped it just because, so I had metal from the left side of my pelvis to the right side of my pelvis. And I'm pretty sure I haven't had an x-ray, but I'm pretty sure that has broken because of like all the stretching and the flexibility that you need for rock climbing. I think it just kind of like loosened it up and like the plate has moved a little bit. Yeah. I mean, they eventually remove it or is this a permanent, it's like a permanent thing, but it's like, I mean, I, so I knew when I got this plate that it had the chance of breaking, whether it would be through childbirth or just rigorous exercise or whatnot, but for them to go in and get it, there's so much scar tissue wrapped around that, that would be more, more work than it's worth. Yeah. So it's just going to be something that's either floating or just stuck in there for the, until the day I die. Yeah. And that's kind of why I decided I didn't really want to have kids just because of all the complications of like, I would probably have to have a C-section. I don't want to have a C-section. And now I just kind of don't want kids. Like I, I have no interest. I've got a vasectomy planned for like yeah. as soon as we're home from this trip. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, I think and Bonnie's trying to get off birth control. Like she, she's been on birth control for fucking 20 years and like what that does to your hormones and shit. And so I've never been on birth control. I've just work. been, yeah, I've just been, I've just been really lucky. I always use the pullout method. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's effective. <laughs> Oddly enough. Yeah. Um, and like I have people that they swear by that, um, the temperature checking mm-hmm. and I mean, I don't know. I don't, I think that there's this huge thing with girls either relying on plan B or (sighs) taking birth control and they're completely fucking up their hormones. Yeah. And, and like, that's, that's something, you know, me being more familiar now with it, with Bonnie's going through it, like realizing like, Oh, you've been chemically castrated for fucking 20 years. Yeah. Meanwhile, like, yeah, I've been on HRT now for like the last handful of years to get my hormones right. And I know what a giant fucking difference that's made. And yeah. like, of, of course she needs the same. So yeah. like as a partner, like if I can go get this, a reversible procedure, Hey, I don't want kids. I don't want kids anyway. Yeah. And so like, of course I'll do this. And then you don't have that stress and you don't have to pull out <laughs> or, or and you don't have to be fucking on this other thing that's fucking up your hormones. Yeah. And so no, man, I'm, I'm happy. I think it's, yeah. I think it's a real weird thing that we do. Um, well, I think that everything in American culture kind of like from the food that we eat to the medicines that we put ourselves on, you know, we don't get enough sunlight. We don't get enough exercise. We don't get enough water. Like everybody's hormones are completely f- fucked. Yeah. We don't prioritize it at all. We sure as shit don't. We're not proactive on health. We're a completely reactive society at this point. Yeah. Um, now, you mentioned earlier that you've been celibate for since... October. So, and I, it's not like I'm like purposely being celibate. I just like, that's when I ended my relationship. That's when I wrote that letter to that guy. And 
I just haven't been with somebody physically since because I feel like I want to be able to trust somebody. I want to know it's like somebody that like I genuinely care about and want to be with long-term before I like open that door because I feel like I am somebody that like cares deeply about people. And there's definitely a hormone in women that once you sleep with somebody, you yeah, care even more. And it's like, why would I even put myself through that? And yeah, oxytocin's I'm, a fucking great drug. Right? So it's like, why, like me, I'm, I'm on this journey. I'm doing my own thing. I don't want somebody to hold me back unless they're worth holding me back. Even, even then, like even that mentality of worth holding you back, like, yeah, but, you don't have to settle for that. Yeah, but not even worth holding me back because I feel like if I was to be with somebody, they would be as adventurous as me, if not more adventurous. Like I if, want if you can find a partner, and I'm telling you this, that like there's there's people out there that are a one plus one equals a three. That you're the collective of you two together is better than than the individual parts could be at all. Which is exactly what I'm looking for. And yeah. until I can find that. There's Don't like, settle. I'm not going to waste my time Fuck yeah. and I'm not going to waste your time. No. I, yeah. Cause I, I didn't know if, I guess where I was going with the celibacy thing was I didn't know if the like surgery and all the fucking metal in your pelvis is, no. is uncomfortable or no, that's well, that's up higher. So it's okay. like completely different. Yeah. It never touches. Well, I've seen the, I've seen the x-ray and it's yeah. tough from like that yeah. angle to get an idea of where yeah. things are. Yeah. But yeah, it's completely not painful. Good. <laughs> good. Good. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. Um, bang bars, not boys. Is this, were you guys doing an apparel for a bit? We did. So, um, that was my best friend at the time, but we kind of had a fallout. Um, I had fronted all the money for like the first, um, production or whatnot. And we just, I don't know. We just had a fallout. I won't even talk about sure. it. But, um, and then I was just, I decided to devote my time to pins because like the pins that my parents sell, like they range from $3 to a hundred thousand dollars. So a six figure pin. Yep. What's this fucking pin do? Does it come with a house? No, it's just, if you have a lot of money, like too much money, what do you spend it on? I, I get it. Like I like watches. I, there's, I, yeah. I get it. And it's all like, it's all like a status symbol. I'm very happy with this pin. This yeah. is a pin I'm really happy with right? I, that I, I paid, I don't know, 150 bucks for. And I was like, well, I'll see how quickly that disappears. And oddly enough, it hasn't yep. disappeared yet. And so I'm really happy with it, but I, I get it. But fuck six figures on a pin. But I just kind of thought to myself, I was like, I can sell a lot of crop tops, you know, for 25 bucks, 30 bucks a piece, or I can sell one pen for $5,000 and it's a lot less work. Yeah. Um, I'll just make my money a, a little well, bit. Well, it's easy. better than going to do the nine to five thing every day instead of, yeah. you know, if you've got the confidence and the tolerance for dancing, yeah, let it rip. Yeah. And that was just a way to make fast cash and not be under my parents' thumb because it's like when I'm working for them, of course, they get to tell me yeah, how course. I'm living my life and whatnot. Of course, fuck that. So, no one gets a vote, dude. Yeah. So now, you know. Yeah, and that's 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 something I I live with. You know, after um, you know, the the big kind of real reason I, I was interested in talking to you is because, man, I, I like people that push the detonate button on normal. Yeah. And and you've you've picked a different path. You know, for me, whenever I got out of pain, um, I mean, I was married in a relationship for thirteen years and been married for a decade, and and. I, I didn't want to go that route. I could see it. Like I could just see the regular life yeah. of, of that, especially since I, I don't know that I'm getting out of pain. I don't know what's coming. I just know that I don't want to do that. And yeah. my, uh, my wife at the time, um, you know, wasn't that interested in going the route I was interested in. That's, that's okay too. That's her life. And yeah. she gets to make those decisions. We're still friends and still close. And, Super fucking lame, but you know, that's hey, almost never going why back. I don't believe in marriage anymore. Just because I feel like you can be somebody's best friend and then you can be with them for a year, five years, 10 years, 13 years, whatever it is. And then you can wake up one day and y'all can be two completely different people and that's okay. 
And I don't ever want somebody to have to stay with me because a piece of paper. No. You want to walk out that door, you go. You yeah, know? that's. And because like, I don't want kids, it kind of makes it even easier. Right. And that's, that's something that uh, yeah, Bonnie and I have talked about. And that mindset that you've got, I feel, I feel the same way about now. Whereas um, yeah, I want it as easy for you to leave as it, as it can be. Yeah. Cause, because cause if you say, don't want to be here, you don't, you don't have to be, you're not obligated because people's intentions can change yeah. and it's not personal. It's just life shifts. I, I, I got in that relationship at 22, right? And like, yeah. There isn't anything else in my life that I would say like, you like this at 22 and now you're forced to fucking feel that way forever. Yeah. And, and man, a lot of, you know, we grew and changed a lot together, but at the same time there were, there were other aspects that just weren't. And, uh, I, I know enough about me now that like, I need to be able to leave. Like I need to be able to fuck off. I need to be able to disappear on the road. Like I need those times for travel yeah. and, uh, it's, it's a non-compromise anymore. And it was, she was never in the way of that, but she didn't want to go. Yeah. And so what's the point of being with somebody if you can't experience that? Because, I don't know. It, you know, it's great to experience it by yourself, but it's a whole nother level to be in love with somebody and experience it with them. Yep. She just yeah had a, had a different thing that she was interested in doing. And as I'm not interested in compromising my time in my life, I'll never ask someone else to do things they don't want to do either. Well, and it becomes like an insecurity issue. Like my thing is like, I can't even be with, I mean, I could, but they would have to be, be a very strong individual because if you don't want to come, I'm still going. And yep. you might not be able to handle that. Yep. And when I don't answer my phone, cause I'm off grid for three, you know, three days, you might not be able to handle that. No, most people can't. Yeah. Most people can't. Most people can't. You know, mo most people don't understand the fucking off and doing the van and saying, fuck it. Much less trying to live a normal life with a partner who's done that. Yeah. It just doesn't add up. Like, why, why aren't you here? Why don't you want to be? Cause yo, I got to fucking go. And I understand that most people have to work like real jobs sometimes. So like for yeah, me, for me, like I'm super compromising in that fact, like, oh, okay, yeah, you got to work for three months. Okay. Well, let's go to Moab for two weeks after that. Like if you can't figure out how to make time and save enough, like save enough money to eventually go with me, like there's no reason for me to put my time and effort into it, it you know? Yeah. Like, you'll have a real tough time being with someone who's got a nine to five who gets yeah. like two weeks of vacation and gives five days a week to work and then gets two days of kind of freedom to run errands. Like, yeah, you're not going to be able to deal with it. Especially cause like with climbing, like you got to have like a week to do some projects, yeah. like even ju just a hike in and base camp, like, you know, that'll take days, you know, like, so us going on a weekend isn't really going to do anything, you know, but, like, but you've made the compromise, right? You've decided that that life experience and that adventure is more important than the Joneses. Yeah. That the idea of success means look at my house and these things I have. Yeah. Versus look what I fucking do. Yeah. And God, it's inspiring, man. You, you make me want to do cooler shit all the time. And, uh, that's, that's why we bail. That's why we, 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 you know, I try to, I try to find the balance between those two worlds. And if I've got a world that I can up and move to somewhere else, we're going. But you have operations back home that they ship out the orders when you're not there. Yeah. So we live in St. Louis and, and lucky enough when I started hate brand in like Louisiana, I'd never planned on starting an apparel company. I'd done some writing about the Highland games and competing and wrote a program for it. And I talked about kind of the personal philosophy that was of hate in it. And I uh, started having enough people ask for a shirt. I was like, fuck, I don't want to do that. Plus, plus I had a real job at the time. Like yeah. I'm, I'm competing a lot and I'm doing outside sales in the oil and gas industry. And so I've worked in that industry for 10 years and I was like, I don't have time to ship like fucking four shirts this week. And so I got a buddy of mine, Phil, who still runs everything for me in Topeka and I'm now partnered with on our print shop. Um, he's like, well, I, I can print and fulfill orders and do all the customer service from here. You just have to market it and come up with ideas. And I'm like, huh, that's different. 
And so then I came up with a t-shirt design and we did a pre-sale in October of 2014. And now we're here in 2021. And yeah. And so like that fulfillment is still there. I've, I've invested back into where now Phil and I own the screen printing shop that we were renting space to. And we now do this for a dozen or so other brands under our, our other brand merch masters. And it's, you know, if I can ever provide that freedom that I got to someone else, like I'm in, Yeah. you know what I mean? Like, fuck man, if you get a chance to, if, if you, if that's, what's holding you up from trying to sell stuff it's like, well, I don't know the shipping part. Like I can take, I can do it all. Yeah. You know, if you can come up with an idea and you have an audience that wants to buy shit, we can handle that whole backside for you and you can keep the freedom. Yeah. And that, that part's been really cool to, to offer to people. Um, but that's, I got lucky enough that it got built that way from jump. And so like Phil did the whole thing out of Topeka, even when I was in Louisiana, like I haven't, I didn't go visit my warehouse for five years. Like I'd never been in there Holy because crap. it ain't broken. They yeah. don't need me showing up fucking things up. <laughs> and so now that I'm in St. Louis and five hours away, I mean, I've still probably only been over there six times in the eight years we've been in business. And uh, it, it's been, it's been great to have that avenue and there's companies that do fulfillment, but their minimums are high and they're based in LA. So they're paying a shit ton for rent. Yeah. And so everything's expensive. Yeah. There's a, there's a company then in, in uh, Houston that did that kind of thing, but I didn't go through their way cause it would have been easier or it'd been cheap. I could have driven the price down on the crop tops. Mm-hmm. They were trying to charge like 60 bucks a crop top. And I'm like, yeah, like <sighs> that's just a little expensive. That's too much. Yeah. yeah that's so that's much. why I decided to screen print my own and just give the money all up front. And so there was no pre-orders. There right. was no, you know, make it when it's ordered. Yeah. It was just, well, if you're ever interested in, Making shirts again. Just got to think of new slogans. There you go. I can, <laughs> yo, the van, the van thing's so cool though, dude. Yeah. Like you're doing a thing that's so unique and original. Um, you know, fucking podcasts. Like there's so many avenues to make an income from the road. Like, yeah. This is easy. And not only that, like barrier of entry, this is fancy. Like yeah. having fucking nice microphones and a studio and all that. It's great. But I've done a lot of episodes where I'll just set that on the fucking table between two people and really? they work great. It's, it's good enough to figure out if you like doing it. Yeah. Because you're meeting a lot of people that are going to be really unique and doing this alternate lifestyle. And I think that there's such an attraction for everyday folks at this idea of people who pull the fucking ripcord. Yeah. Because everyone's terrified of it. It's always this what if, this what if, this what if. Because... I get so many people that ask me, they're like, well, how'd you start doing it? And like, I, you know, I kind of really, really want to do it. And I'm just like, then just do it. Like you literally live in a house, sell your house and just do it. Or rent your house out. Yeah. Now your house is income. Yeah. Hit the fucking road. Yeah. But I think that barrier of entry of the idea that like, well, the sprinter van is going to be 90 grand and then start the build out and I don't have the tools or who to do it. Like. Or even the pre-built ones, like the the Revel or any of that, they're for 180 grand. Yeah, people people are scared to be uncomfortable, and like me, I'm like, if I get comfortable, I'm like, I gotta go, Yo, like, because yeah, then I stop growing. Like, the I already know the it. way, dude. Like, yeah, that that thought, I love. I love that you're chasing uncomfortability. Uh, for me, with that, like, I the more I'm uncomfortable and the more I'm in a new environment, time slows down. Yeah. And like, cause I'm more aware and things are happening. And whereas like, if I'm in routine at home dude, two weeks, just gone. Well, it's weird living like my friend, she came from Houston with me. I was like, just get in the van. She, she had never been West. She had never been to Montana. I was like, just get in the van. Like it's going to cost me no more to drive up there. Just get in the van. Right. So she got in the van and after three weeks, she was like, I feel like three weeks was a year ago. Yeah. Because it's like when you're doing all these things every single day, it's like your life is so much more fulfilled. Like, yeah, when you're at home and you're just working every day, everything goes by in a blink because there's nothing to remember. There's no autopilot when you're on the road. Cause like, you don't yeah. know where you're sleeping tonight. That's a different feeling. Yeah. 
and everything changes. Like you have so much stimulation all the time. It's, it's almost like it goes fast, but slow at the same time. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love these road trips because of the way it, it changes my perception of the time and how things pass. And I'm fully engulfed. Yeah. Like I've been doing this for a year, but it, it feels like a lot longer. I fucking bet. Yeah. Cause I've done so much shit. I'm like, and what are like, your, what are your favorite places? Um, Utah is awesome, but the problem is that Zion is packed now. I mm. feel like because of Instagram, it's, um, kind of ruining the great places because when people go there and they don't know how to treat the places and they no. don't have like trail etiquette and whatnot, which kind of sucks. So I've kind of stopped tagging the places that I've, you know, like wanted to keep like sacred, you know? Um, but Definitely Utah, just because there's great climbing, there's great water. Like the water in Utah is so healthy. Unbelievable, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, Montana, just because I stayed here so much and I know where everything's at. And if you haven't, so there's a spring fed, um, it comes out of the mountain water right in Columbia Falls, right by that river. Okay. You know what I'm talking no. about? No. Oh my God, you have to go taste the water. It is the best drinking water you'll oh, ever taste. Like you'll just see trucks like pull up to this mountain and this water is like shooting out of the mountain and they'll fill up all their water jugs. Like, no get, way. like get like free water. Yeah. So like right when you're going on the two, right when you get into what, or like right before Hungry Horse, okay. there's this pull out and there's just water coming out of the mountain. Oh, shit. And you have to go fill up your water bottle yeah, and drink it. Yeah, all types of water on the truck I need to fill it's up It's anyway, literally so. ice cold. It's so good. It's oh, the best man. water you'll drink. Yeah. So what do you use for finding campsites? Um, I Overlander. That's the same one we use. Yeah. It's that's, killer. That's a good one. And then Do you I'll, contribute? I don't. I don't either. But then... I should start. The Honestly, the best campsites I've found, the best things I've found are from locals. Like. Yeah get on Tinder, ask them, um, that, or, uh, I'll go to like gas station and just I be like, f- Hey, I feel like you have a different advantage on Tinder for yeah. getting local help than if, if I'm <laughs> swiping through, like <laughs> just start, just start using, just looking for friends. <laughs> Want to hang out in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Oh there's, a, there's a different cell factor there, right? Like, <laughs> but yeah. man, that, that app has been so wildly consistent for us. Yeah that really rarely is it is it a miss and then now knowing that like oh you can just sleep anywhere in national forest perfect yeah you just have to be i think 100 feet off the water yeah that and then uh you can look at blm land online any blm land good to go too um utah is incredible yeah i I, so i i think we'll move we'll leave st louis sometime in the next three or four years and probably I think Vegas is going to be where we land. Like kind of Vegas outside is of Vegas. so badass because then you get air, like you're right in the cusp of Arizona, Utah. You're like two hours from Zion. You're an hour from Lake Powell. Unfortunately, got- three hours from LA, which is a necessary evil, evil for work. Yeah. I have to go every once in a while. Yeah. But even three hours isn't that bad of a no, drive. Easy. And then you like, I mean, I haven't been to Cali yet. Just, I mean, I've been to Cali for work before. I've never been to Cali to travel. Sure. And I've just been waiting for COVID to like, cause I don't, I don't well Dude, now it's fine. Cause I feel like after I, the, I have a campsite I'll share with you that yeah, I won't say online, a so, secret but line. it's, um, it's in Oregon. Like, so Southern Oregon toward California border. Um, okay. But it's. Yeah, I got it. I got the GPS coordinates tattooed on me so I don't fucking miss it. So my big thing is like once I leave Montana, I have no idea where I'm going and I'm kind of thinking Washington down to Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, so that cuz I cuz I've never been to Washington. I've never been to Oregon. And so I I might do that. I just I would love to share that campsite with you yeah. as well as um this company I work with, uh, Oregon Originals, they're a CBD farm. Yeah. And they're in Southern Oregon run by great dudes and I'm sure would happily give a, give a place to say like, Hey, how's it going? If you need a resource. Okay. So they're, they're Sweet. rad, rad guys. Yeah. I mean, I figured I'd just go on Instagram and like, Hey, where do I go? <laughs> yeah. And they, they camp and fuck off in the area a ton too. Yeah. So they, they all know what's up. 
Yeah. Shout out to Sean and Dylan. They're fucking I great. think I think that's the hardest part is figuring out where to go next. Cause like I'm so I'm so I like I like I don't plan anything. I'm so indecisive. I'm just like whatever. Sure, but that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Is that freedom of I don't know where I'm going, but also the the ability to say like I'll go wherever I want. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, I hate it. Oh god, <laughs> well, it's I, a move. I gotta, I, <laughs> yeah. I gotta put gas in the car and leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Um, so, so you're able to make money social media, helping marketing and stuff from the road. And when you're home, you've got an ability to dance. The you don't have a car note on the van. Nope. Nope. And so, being able to keep your overhead low, yeah, is, is got to be the ticket. Yeah. I mean, I pay for food and gas. Food and gas. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Dude. Yeah. I'm wildly, wildly impressed getting to chat with you, Melissa. I, I, I super stoked. We're hour and 15 minutes in. Did not feel like it. No, it goes pretty quick, right? Yeah. Um, anything in particular you want to share? People can follow along with your OnlyVans. I don't have an OnlyVans, only an Instagram, underscore Melissa Texas. I don't even know. I just, I feel like. I know like that you don't give much of a shit about it. So that's. I don't give a shit about really anything. Like, I just feel like people need to not be scared to just literally send it. Like, if you're not happy, literally go, leave, like make changes in your life. Like you can be stuck turning your wheels in the same place. And for what? Can you imagine you know? if you didn't, if you didn't bail? Like if you didn't make this move, if you like, what what is Melissa doing without this decision currently? I mean, I was. This is the thing, though, is like when I was in Houston, I was so unhappy. I hated my life. Like I literally thought about, like I would just drive to work and I would want to just take my car into the concrete barrier. Like now, I'm literally on the edge of a cliff, and I don't ever think, oh, I want to jump off this and die. No, I'm like. I love my fucking life. Like I have every opportunity to kill myself out here and I just want to live, you know, like, but in Houston, I mean, I hated my environment. I hated the people in my life. I hated, you know, like I just wasn't in a good space. And it turns out that the only thing that was keeping me back was putting me down was my environment. And the moment that I changed my environment, I changed my whole life. Did that register this different like accountability for your own happiness in life that no one else really gets a control that it is on you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, now if, you know, if somebody doesn't make me feel a good way, I can say, Hey, like, I don't really like that. And they can either choose to change how they treat me or we just can go our separate ways. This yeah, is a non-negotiable. It's, yeah, it's not a big deal. Like I used to feel like I everybody had to like me. You know, like for what? You no, know, it's a nice weight to get rid of. <laughs> it's way cooler to like yourself than it is to give a shit yeah. about how other people do. Because think. the right people are gonna like you. Of course. You know, and that's that's the, another thing with energy is that if, if something just is not working, maybe it shouldn't work. Yeah. You know, it's not supposed to be as much work yeah. as, as you think it is. Um, yeah. I remember like the first really stable relationship I got into. And I remember just thinking like, so wait, if we're both trying at this, this seems really easy. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like in the past, I just always It's like you're just these. waiting for shit to hit the fan. Like when are like, when are we going to have our first fight? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, cause I just dated disasters. Yeah. I was very confused of, um, I confused that excitement or uh, drama I confused for excitement. And, uh, yeah. Well, I think that we also date who we think that we deserve. So yeah. I, I definitely didn't, I mean, I didn't think very highly of myself. So I didn't date people that treated me very well. Now it's completely different. You know, but all due to a concussion. Yeah, it, it took it took six of them to six of them to, to, finally, to, re, to rattle it back together. Huh? Yeah, it was. Yeah, now it's like, oh, just don't do it again. Maybe it'll go back the other way. <laughs> yeah, do you ever <laughs> you ever think about that? Like, I mean, yeah. Well, some because like, man, I got the good at like. There's people that get TBIs and they wake up angry and not good, or yeah. they'll wake up like a vegetable. Me, I woke up like a way better version of myself. So yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, that the TBI portion of the story that that things shifted after that injury. Now, did you have to do any other therapy for the TBI, like post or? Um, so for the TBI, I made, so I did a lot of acupuncture after the TBI and, um, a lot of CBD and herbal stuff from the acupuncturist. And then it was just nice because my general doctor, his daughter is an acupuncturist. So they just kind of teamed up and. Now I know that, I know that they show a lot of like neuro, uh, regeneration from like microdosing psilocybin. And mm-hmm. I didn't know if that's ever something you've looked into I, or, I did or not, thought about. But whatever happened in my brain, I'm I'm completely good with it. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, yo, thank you again. And yeah. uh, I'm really excited to go do a video about your man. Yeah, thank you.